Hi everyone. In today's lecture, we will analyze capacitive circuits, uh, purely capacitive circuits with DC inputs, uh, DC voltage sources as inputs and we will try to analyze the charge distribution and uh, the final voltages in a complex network of capacitors, the settled voltages across the capacitors in a complex network of uh, capacitors. So, here <coughs> Let me just state this uh, fact. So, if I apply a voltage V x across the capacitor, then there is a charge that is C V x which is transferred to the capacitor. Now, mathematically uh, the transfer happens instantaneously and that is an assumption we will make throughout this, uh, throughout this lecture when I am analyzing different circuits. So, one of the simplest circuits is two capacitors in series assume with C and 2 C and uh, say you apply 2 volts across the capacitors. Now, here I am assuming that the initial charge or initial voltage across both the capacitors is 0. So, you are supposed to find what are the final settled voltage across both the capacitors. We have already discussed for a general capacitor in the last class. We can use that directly if, if the charge is 0 for both the capacitors initial charge is 0 then it is pretty simple. Uh, or otherwise we can actually find the uh, total charge and we can then compute the voltages across it. But I would actually use a slightly different approach uh, which would be very helpful in solving with capacitors with initial charges across it. So, we will I will just uh, discuss that right now. So, now we know that the charge Q uh, that is transferred from the source to the capacitor is the same for both the capacitors because both of them are in series. So, now let delta V be the voltage across the first capacitor then we know that since charge is same the second capacitor voltage since the value is 2 C it has to be delta V by 2. Okay. So, this comes from assuming C delta V is the charge here in this capacitor then the charge in this capacitor is 2 C into delta V by 2 which is same as C delta V. Okay. So, since these two charges and the charges in both the capacitors are same the voltage across this will be delta V by 2. So, from this I get delta V plus delta V by 2 equals 2 volts and I can compute delta V from this and delta V is 4 thirds of a volt. So, the distribution of voltages across these two capacitors is this is C and 2 C it this will be 4 thirds and this would be 2 thirds of a volt. Now, we will analyze a capacitive circuit with initial conditions. So, say we have an initial charge of our initial voltage or you can either mention in terms of voltage or charge of 1 volt across the capacitor 2 C and now you apply 2 volts after that after it is being charged and you apply a 2 volts uh, across the 2 capacitors. Now, we can up, we can use a similar approach to analysis the moment you apply this voltage source there is a transfer of charge from here and removal of charge on this plate or you know transfer of charge from this plate to this point okay or depositing of negative charges on this plate you can you can see it in any way. So, either you can transfer positive charge on this plate and uh, remove positive charge from this plate which is equivalent to de depositing uh, negative charge on this plate. Now, since the charge is same I will again use the same analysis same understanding the same analysis so, if delta V is the voltage across the capacitor C, this will be 1 volt plus delta V by 2. So, here you have to understand the capacitor 2 C already has uh, a certain amount of charge stored on it, which is contributing to this 1 volt uh, potential difference between the two plates. Now, you are adding an extra charge from the voltage source 2 volt, uh, from the 2 volt voltage source. So, that extra charge will further increase the potential difference between the two plates. So, you would get plus delta V by 2 because the charge is same if delta V is the voltage across the capacitance C due to that excess charge then the extra voltage because of that excess charge transferred from the 2 volt source is delta V by 2. So, now again I will use this condition delta V plus 1 volt plus delta V by 2 should be equal to 2 volts. So, from this you would get 3 delta V by 2 is 1 and delta V is two thirds of a volt. So, the final distribution of charge will be 
uh, C and in this case it will be two thirds of a volt and on this capacitor you would have 1 plus 1 by 3 which is 4 thirds of a volt ok now there is other way of solving the same problem I mean that would be more intuitive I mean I this procedure I just explained it uh, because it is very easy to get the final answers now the other procedure uh, which will be more intuitive and probably uh, makes more sense is that to analyze in that case what do, what what I would do is first this is a capacitor of C and say this is 2 volts now you need to find this capacitor has a charge of 1 volt ok and uh, this capacitor has 0 charge first how does the eventual steady state charge distribution and voltage distribution takes place in this circuit so to analyze this we can use the principle of superposition ok as far as charge and voltages are concerned they are all they are linearly related you know charge is proportional to voltage so in this circuit you can apply the principle of superposition so first I will assume that I will find I will solve the problem assuming there was no in input voltage source so you are just applied 1 volt to this so what would happen is that this circuit can be reduced to this so you have a 2C capacitance with 1 volt charge across it and you have C like this so then we can apply charge sharing to find the voltage across the capacitor C so you understand I am going to call this node as uh, 2 and this that, that's the voltage at this point is 2 and this node as 1 ok or, or, or we will call it as ground or anything you can call it 1 now uh, the distribution the final voltage at V2 the node voltage at this point with respect to 1 how do you find we just use charge sharing so 2C into 1 volt is the initial voltage uh, initial charge across the capacitor 2C the final charge is going to be 3C into that final voltage V2 minus V1 I will just assume V1 is 0 so it is V2 so from this you would get V2 as 2 by 3 volts ok so which means the, the capacitor here C and 2C the capacitor 2C will finally have a voltage of 2 by 3 in this fashion and this capacitor C will hold a value of minus 2 by 3 right I mean V2 has to be positive so this node voltage is positive or I can write it as plus minus minus 2 by 3 now I will again apply so this way you have computed the voltage across the two capacitors now apply the voltage source 2 volts across the two capacitors now assume the charge is 0 there is no initial charge uh, so both the capacitors have zero zero charge across them so from that we have already computed this solved this problem the voltage across the capacitor 2c the c was 4 by 3 and the voltage across the capacitor 2c was 2 by 3 because the because it's a 2 volt source uh, the both the voltages should add up to 2 volts and the voltage across 2c is half of the voltage across c which is uh, 2 by 3 and 4 by 3 volts now then you add the two voltages this this distribution of charges this circuit is because of the initial charge and this circuit is because of the fourth response or at the response due to this two volt source which you applied ok so now if you combine the two results you can write the final di final distribution of charges as so this was 4 by 3 and this is minus 2 by 3 you add the two you get 2 by 3 across the capacitor C so this is C and across 2C you would get 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 which is 4 by 3 so this with a 2 volt applied with an initial condition ok and we got the same answer as shown here with an initial charge of 1 volt I solved it and I got the same answer and this makes more sense because uh, the, as soon as you have a charge on this cap essentially what this circuit is telling you is that the charge present on 2C and uh, what this analysis is telling you is that the charge present on 2C was first redistributed between the capacitor and the voltage source ok after the redistribution then the charge was after that transferred from 2 volts into this so if you actually look at it there are there are there was actually two phenomena which was uh, two things which were happening in the circuit 
first charge was transferred from 2C into C and then charge was transferred from the voltage source into both the capacitors. So that's what is actually happening in the circuit and that's how we actually get the residual voltages as we obtained in this problem. So two thirds and four thirds finally due to this initial charge. So I will take another example, I mean this would become uh, even more clearer. So first let us consider we have a 1 volt voltage source and uh, I have two capacitors. So say this is C and 2C and I have 1 volt stored across the one volt, uh, capacitor C and 0 volts initially across 2C. Now again we can use it using the same method we discussed a um, few minutes back as since these two capacitors are, are in series the charge transferred is same for both of them. So this will be if this excess voltage is delta V the excess voltage created across 2C will be delta V by 2. So from that we can calculate 3 delta V by 2 plus 1 is 1 so your delta V is 0 which means even after applying 1 volt and excitation there is no transfer of charges uh, between the two capacitors. Uh, be between the voltage source and the capacitor it would just stay at this would come to 0 volts the 1 volt is entirely dropping across the capacitor C and the voltage across 2C is 0. Okay. Now you can very easily prove the same way if I apply 1 volt there won't be any trans charge transfer when you have say 2C the 1 volt is now initially stored across 2C even in, the, in this problem you can very easily show that there is no charges there is no charge transferred from the 1 volt source ok that is what this tells us. Uh, we can also analyze it in a different way as I said use the principle of sower position. So in that case first assume this was 1 volt and you had C and 2 C. So initially this was 1 volt so now you will have to short this out and first find the charge distribution because of this. So if I have shorted this out what you get is that the circuit would be something like this you have 1 volt uh, across C. Now this node this common node uh, will be now the point here and you will have 2C in this direction ok. See this node is at a higher potential. So now this is this is shorted to this. So this node is at a higher potential. So I am call let us let us call this node as 2. So this node will be V2 ok with respect to this and uh, so this is the overall circuit. So now after charge distribution we can calculate 3C into Vx the final voltage should be equal to C into 1. So your Vx is one third of a volt. So now what happens is that finally the voltage across both the capacitors come to one third. So this is 1 by 3 volts and the voltage across capacitor 2C so as, as per this problem it is 1 by 3 in this direction or I can write it as plus minus 1 by 3 in this direction ok. So all it says is this potential this terminal 2 is higher than this node voltage by 1 by 3 volts and writing it as minus 1 by 3 in, indicates the same. So I have shorted this. Now apply the voltage source for of 1 volt and assume there is no initial charge. So this is C and 2C. Now when I apply 1 volt, uh, 1 volt gets dist distributed between th C and 2C and we can very easily show that this voltage would be 2 thirds of a volt and this will be 1 third. Again uh, this capacitor is 2C charge is same therefore the voltage across 2C has to be half of the voltage across C you know and, and again this is very easily can be shown by the equations we did in the last class and I am just uh, doing this because I have analyzed a lot of circuits and once you do to a certain extent you will be able to write this. So now if you add these two voltages as add these two voltages shown in the circuit finally you would have 1 volt as you can as you see you, you might as well short it or call it a 0 volt at this point right short 0 volt is a short. So you just add these two voltages at every node then you will get 0 plus 1 as 1 and the capacitor C will have a voltage of 1 volt and 2C will have a voltage of 0 volts across it. So what did, what happened in the circuit is that the initially the capacitor 1 volt charge was distributed uh, distributed to C, 2C 
and then there was some charge transferred from the one volt source now both the charges were in opposite polarity so finally that cancels out and you had no charge across 2c that's what uh, this method tells you and this is probably what ha i mean this is what happens in reality but we can do the same analysis without resorting to this superposition directly assuming a volt excess voltage of delta v and using kvl you would get the same answer okay so that should be fine now the same thing can be applied to a series of more than two capacitors so i say i have a capacitor c 2c and uh, say c again now each one has some initial voltage assume that this has 1 by 3 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 all three capacitors have initial voltages and now apply a 2 volt input to this so if i apply a 2 volt input to this then again you can assume this capacitor c will see a change of delta v capacitor 2c will see half of whatever c the capacitor c sees and this is the value of capacitance is same again so this will also be delta v so the sum of all the voltages is uh, 1 plus 2 delta v plus so that will be 5 delta v by 2 equals 2 so your delta v will be 2 by 5 of volt so then uh, you can substitute your delta v in this and you can find the final voltages so here we have uh, shown a very simple procedure of computing the final settled voltages in a purely capacitive circuits okay uh, with initial conditions and even without initial conditions it's pretty trivial with initial conditions you can you can solve it in in, the, in this manner what i've described right now now i'll just add capacitors in parallel so say we had a capacitor c and another capacitor of value 2c and i'm going to add another capacitor of value 3c and i've st stored charge of 1 volt across this and a stored charge of 1 volt across this and 2 volts now when you are given a circuit like this uh, this 2 volt is connected after the 1 volt charging is done that's what that's so see ideally i should put a switch here and show that okay first these capacitor is charged to 1 volt this is charged to 1 volt and instantly suddenly this switch is closed okay uh, now as soon as your switch is closed your 3c capacitor fully sees this it's in parallel so parallel with this combination of c and 2c it sees this voltage 2 volt and entirely so because of which there will be a sudden transfer of charge to the capacitor 3c and uh, that transfer charge will be 3c into 2 minus 1 which is 3c coulombs okay now this charge transfer will take place instantaneously and the voltage across 3c will instantaneously change from 1 volt to 2 volt okay so in the last class i described when you, for you to have such instantaneous changes you need to have an impulse of current or an instantaneous charge transfer which implies an impulse of current so in this all this analysis it's already assumed you know that impulse of current because it's an ideal voltage source it can provide that impulse of current now what about the capacitors in series the c and 2c you can analyze them as two non-interacting systems i mean when i say when you have many capacitors in parallel okay uh, and a voltage source correct the most important point is you have a voltage source connected across them then you can in analyze them as uh, two separate non-interacting systems i mean when what i mean by that is the capacitor here the charge here and here will not interact with each other you know you can as well analyze them as uh, two separate systems if you have a voltage source across them okay because the voltage source fixes the voltage between the two points so it, the the, tra the charge actually either you know goes to and fro between the voltage source and the parallel capacitors so if this is 2 volts and this is 1 volt and we have already solved this assume this is delta v then this would be delta v by 2 uh, then i i think we have already solved this problem i think you should get this as 2 thirds and 4 thirds you know this should be 2 thirds and 4 thirds we have already solved this problem you can go back a few minutes and see this so that will be the final voltage distribution across the capacitors so the 3c capacitor will get 2 volts so here you will get three two thirds of a volt four thirds and this would get 
this will get uh, two volts across this this is a 3c capacitance so this is the final voltage distribution when you apply a two volt voltage source across this okay and uh, let me give another uh, network of capacitors so this the if let's say we go for a bridge network again this problem i just wanted to cover the idea of charge sharing so i thought it will be very useful So say we had four capacitors and uh, and we applied a voltage of one volt across this. So now this is a purely symmetric circuit between these two points between these two points. So these two voltages will also be same. You can say that if these two voltages are same, then I, I might as well ignore this capacitance. There is no charge stored on it. So potential difference is zero. I might as well short these two and analyze it. So if one volt is applied, then this reduces to a network of 2c in series with 2c so each of them would get half a volt because they are identical capacitors each of them would get half a volt across it so final voltage distribution would be half 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 and half and zero volts across the 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 center capacitor which i have shorted which i have shorted it right now now consider another problem where you have you have shorted this and all the capacitors are identical and there is a one volt charge across the center capacitor okay these two these two nodes are now at a different potential then how do we go about so here there is no input voltage source okay so then how do we find the steady state voltage in the end so for this we have to actually use the simple concept of charge sharing so when you short these two nodes these two nodes you can say this capacitor and this capacitor are in parallel so i'll i'll call this as node 1 and node 2 so the circuit would reduce to something like this from node 1 and node 2 so this i'll call this node the entire node the common node this has node 3 so from node 1 to node 3 you have actually a capacitance of 2c in parallel c and c are in parallel again these two capacitors are in parallel you would get 2c and once both are shorted so this node will be node 3 so this capacitor has one volt across this and i can further reduce this circuit as c and uh, these two are in series 2c and 2c are in series so you will get c you know two capacitors are in series so the value of effective capacitance is c and this, if this has one volt across this after charge sharing you will get half a volt across the capacitor c across this you would have half a volt and now i'll split the capacitance into two so this is 2c this is 2c both understand both these capacitors should have half a volt so this node here should be half a volt higher than this node so this capacitor will take one fourth of a volt in this direction and this capacitor will take one fourth of a volt in this direction okay so now again i'll split these as two capacitors uh, these were these were actually two capacitors in parallel so i'll split it like this so this is c with one fourth of a volt and again c with one fourth of a volt and uh, I'm sorry, the direction of one fourth is different. So let let me use minus. If I'm going to use plus minus one by four here, I'll put it at minus one by four. So this is C, and uh, these two nodes are shorted, and I'm going to write it like this. So this C, I've split it like this into two capacitors, two C. Now this was plus minus one by four and uh, so similarly i can write this as plus minus 1 by 4 and if i'm going to write plus minus in this direction it will be minus 1 by 4 okay so that will be the final distribution of uh, charges between the two terminals
So final distribution of voltages between the two terminals. So I'll give you one problem now. You can try solving it. What if I had a voltage source of 1 volt connecting all the four capacitors like this. All the capacitors. And this capacitor has a 1 volt stored across this. What will be the steady state voltages across all the capacitors? So you can uh, try this problem out. Okay. I will probably discuss it in the next class or the class after that. Whenever we have time in one of the classes, we will discuss this. And we will discuss one final problem and I will finish this lecture. So, so this is again a very interesting circuit which has an application. So which is why I thought I will cover. So first assume that you have a, a network of two capacitors. and there is a switch to ground. So, the switches are controlled by two signals. So, first all these switches are closed. So both the capacitors are charged to 1 volt and 1 volt. After that, there is one more switch which is placed here. So, first before uh, I will call this as S, S, S and S. S is, S is a signal which controls these four switches first those four switches are on so that the first circuit would be something like this. So, you have C and C both of them are charged to 1 volt. After that this switch is closed okay, and this switch is closed and all the four switches are open now. These four switches are open. So, this let me, let me draw it separately. After that what we are going to do is that I'll, so, when, when the arrow is shown upward it is open. So, both all the uh, four switches are open and the switch to ground is shorted. This is ground, this is shorted, this is connected and then there is one more switch which goes like this which is again shorted to C. C. What will be the voltage at this point? I mean at this point, what will be the voltage at this point? So, now we know that I, I can remove the voltage source because these switches are open this capacitor is charged to 1 volt and is connected to ground and this is charged to 1 volt. So, this node voltage now once this switch is closed I can short these two terminals. The once this, this this is at uh, this node is at 0 volt. So, this is 1 volt higher than that and this node is 1 volt higher than this node. So, the final potential at this point would be 2 volts. So, the final voltage here will be 2 volts. So, this is actually by using a set of switches and voltage sources you can generate higher voltages. So, this is actually voltage doubler generated generated using the capacitors and uh, switches and voltage source. Okay, I will stop at this point.